Today we're over at the Mentor Farm with Matt and we're going to be going over sweet corn. This is something that Josh and I have actually never grown before, but it is something I'd like to learn more about and figure out if we can in the next couple years. What is something that you would suggest to do to help us so that maybe we can try this next year? Because I would love to learn how to do this. Well, there's a couple things. Most people just plant one hit of sweet corn. We meticulously take whatever area we have uh, dedicated to sweet corn and we'll plant like two rows, and these are about 60 foot rows. So we'll plant two of them together at once. Um, as soon as that comes up, we'll plant the next set. And so if you look, you can see we got some just starting to come in tassel, oh, yeah. all the way down to mm -hmm. micro stuff over here, so to speak. That way we have a nice continuous flow and we can handle it and we can process it. The other thing too is, is when those critters come, um, you're not losing it all once. <laughs> and sometimes you get a little bit of a warning. Now for us, we have a livestock guardian dog around here, so we're pretty good shape. We never really get hit here very often. But those that do, a lot of times, you can set up a small electric fence and you fill up a milk jug and in the handle you can run an electric fence and that's about the height of a raccoon. They don't like that. And skunks are nothing and so it's a simple way of keeping stuff out. Another way that's a little less, um, well, it's kind of farmer oriented, is frankly, from the male point of view, um, you, can, you can pee in the corners of the different <laughs> corn. And well, you know, I, oh, guess, no. I guess women my, can too if they want. I would say I mean, my little boy would love to there be on you that go, one. You know, uh, <laughs> yeah, utilize that. Different scents and stuff is just another little warning. It makes the animals a little more uncomfortable. We've seen that work also. <laughs> okay then. Now I hear a lot of people say that you're supposed to direct sow your corn, but I know that some people will actually start it indoors beforehand because worried about birds and other creatures getting to it. What is your recommendation exactly? What we do here is we direct seed. I have transplanted stuff and when we direct seed, we really take care and watch and we plant according to cycles. So we kind of watch the overnight temperature and if it's cold, we'll drag like an old sheets or we have a plastic that we'll put over the sweet corn to hold that heat in. And we really found that it'll mature just as quickly as something that we transplanted, you know, and started three weeks before. So we just kind of got away from the whole transplant. Everybody's got to have that early sweet corn, you know. And the reality of it is, is when you transplant, you are pushing the natural sunlight that comes in, the, the UVB light that comes in in May, that if, in June, that affects corn's growth. So, mm -hmm. you know, you kind of, corn is kind of picky about being within its range of growth. That's when it's the best. And so early stuff, no, we don't, we just don't do that anymore. Now, have you guys ever done the three sisters when you grow corn, beans, and some form of squash? No, we haven't. Um, you know, uh, I've heard of that, and just from an efficiency point of view, I think it's great for smaller gardens, but with the space we have here, it's just something that we, we it, it isn't efficient for us uh, with our lack of time to take care of stuff, that, that's a little more intense. And so, no, we haven't done yeah. that. One thing, too, that we do is a lot of times uh, the different varieties you'll see them put on like little suckers like this particular one's putting on a, a sucker corn now there used to be that a lot of these varieties you would yank this off now sometimes we'll let these on if everything's going really well and they will produce something decent but more and more modern varieties don't have that we we have the open pollinated corn, uh, sweet corn we have out by the tomatoes now that may sucker out and we may keep them because it's a thinner stand so kind of you kind of watch but the main thing is is this graduated method of planting every couple of weeks because that's that's still the thing you know people will go to all their effort and they do lose their sweet corn a critter comes in or something and if you have it all at once you're all done yeah. and if you do it like every week um, you kind of have a chance to deal with the problem It's great getting all this information from Matt and learning more ways and things about corn that I never knew before. Hopefully next year, Josh and I can give it a try and see ourselves how it does. Mm -hmm.